now. Hi. That's my son Julian. He's four years old. He just had his birthday, huh? Big birthday. Four years old, being big boy, right? Okay, I want you to go watch TV for a little bit. I'll be right in, okay? Well, that's my four-year-old boy. His name's Julian, and I love him very much. He's a great kid. He told me the other day that I was the best dad ever, and he said it from out of nowhere for no particular reason, and he just made me the proudest dad in the whole world. And because of my child, and because I read a lot about uh, global warming and the environment, I'm not an environmentalist, but I don't see why I can't do things to help our world out a little bit. So I made my own solar panels. I'm making my third solar panel right now. This is my second one, and I think it's out of the two, this is my best. If you uh, check out this diode right here, this is called a blocking diode. This is the positive side. You can see the wire coming from the bottom of the cell. It attaches to the diode, and that is the thoroughfare side, so the power will go out, but power will not go in. Therefore, when a battery is connected up, it won't bleed back toward the cells on the shady portion of the day, thereby losing power off your battery. That's what the blocking diode does for you. Now, you can see from here that uh, if you follow the right side up, it goes all the way up to the top, comes over, comes down the middle section, meets this side, and then goes back up to the top. These are all in line, or you would call it in series. This cell, or solar panel, would make up 18 volts at 1.7 amps. These are ever bright solar cells. They normally come uh, 3 by 6. That would have made this twice as wide as it is right now. This is a 1 by 4 cell. It would have made it a 2 by 4 cell using the full size solar cells. I didn't want to do that because that would have uh, used up too much of my patio so I bought 3 by 3 cells. Uh, if you look up this, uh, they were making 3x3 three three cells, they were saying they were having problems with, with their laser for cutting the cells and they may not be economical for them, you may not be able to buy 3x3 three three cells. However, you will be able to buy the 3x6 cells if you decide to make your own uh, solar cells or solar panels. On the bottom of each panel, I used an outdoor or an indoor electrical outlet that goes on the outside of your drywall. I took out the electrical outlet portion, basically gutted it, screwed this to the bottom of my panel, and thereby creating my junction box. And I simply went to an electronics store with a bar that has the uh, screws in it so that I could um, connect from my solar panel, and then from my solar panel the wire goes to my power control box. This is a, a solar panel that is made up of three parts. It has the frame on the outer side, it has a glass top, and then it has the solar panel below. This white material, and then I'm pointing at right here, this backing material is simply a uh, compressed paper product. You can buy it at any hardware store. It's a quarter inch thick. And then I, below that I have another one that's a quarter inch thick, and I have the wood routed for the glass, so the glass goes inside right here and then I'm going to cock this section here and don't cock inside the uh, inside the wood and make it very tight because the wood will expand and contract and it will break your glass you just want a bead that goes on the outside to prevent water from coming into your uh, your panel you don't want water going inside your panel uh, you don't want condensation or anything like that so you want to seal it the best you can so what I would do is I would I would put caulking on the bottom and uh, sealant on top so that you have a nice sealed system where water vapors can't get inside and cause condensation on the inside. If it does happen, I could take the whole panel off and I'd clean the glass, but I don't want to have to go through doing all that. In the long run, if the uh, wood becomes rotted or old or warped or uh, whatever happens because I have this sitting on top of another backing this whole section can be removed I could build a new uh, frame 
and then reuse this whole solar system. I, I, I made this so it's reusable. I thought that would be a brighter idea than just making it a one-time use thing where if things screw up, you can't fix it. Also, if, uh, let's say, these two, one of these solar cells busted, I'd remove two of these cells, and then I could re-solder these in. I would scrape the silicone off of the bottom, because that's all I did is I put silicone on the bottom of each one of these. I started right here with laying this one down and I had all 12 of them holding up in a row and I put silicone on each one of the uh, cells and then I laid these cells down. And then I moved them around made sure that they were lined up and then I did the next row and the next row and then I put the glass in and voila your solar panel that is removable and fixable. With every solar panel you're going to need batteries. Batteries are the heart and soul of any solar system. It's the only way that mankind knows how to store electrical energy. Okay. Now, in the back is a ProStar 30 power controller. That will uh, make it so that your battery will never be overcharged or undercharged. It keeps it charged at the right area. Right now the yellow light indicates that the battery is about half full. The green light indicates that it's charging. Looking at there from left to right, the left section is where the solar panels come in. The middle section, the four uh, connectors for the battery. So you can basically have two 12 volt batteries hooked up into that area which will allow for a um, 24 volt system. And on the far right is the loadout. You can see the way the batteries are hooked up. I have the positive right there. I have a negative connection right there to a positive connection. And then I have my negative connection out. The red wire in that black wire right there go through to my inverter, which gives me 120 power for uh, doing my 120 household connection. And basically that's all there is to it. I have a 1000 watt true sign inverter, which is the best kind of inverter. And it will run my 40 inch TV. It's not running it right now. I just my son is watching it while I'm making this video. Also, I have a pedal a watt. This wire right here has alligator clips on it, which I connect to these wires right here. Um, this this pedal a watt system right there all by itself is about four hundred dollars you could buy something like this I, there was only two sites I could find there's one for three hundred dollars and there's a pedal a watt for four hundred dollars before I even found the three hundred dollar system I found the pedal a watt and that's what I bought I was gonna make it myself it was too hard the uh, cost of making it myself buying the generator and buying the stand and getting all that stuff together would have cost me about four hundred dollars anyway so I decided just to buy it made up but you can you can get it for three hundred as well I've seen that on the internet as well I all I need to do is connect that to my battery and again this has the diode on it the gray line on the diode showing that that is the blocking side and the black side is the going through side so it's a one-way check valve for electricity